What's up guys? Today we're gonna to talk about sharing your flows in Power Automate. If you guys have flows that you wanna share with other people but you're not really quite sure how to go about doing it and what you need to know about, we're gonna show you two different ways and give you some of the finer details about what it means to share flows with other people. First thing we're gonna talk about when sharing flows with others is adding additional owners. When you create a flow today, you're gonna to be the first owner on that flow, but we wanna be able to add more owners to those flows. This is important when you have people that come and go at a company, when you have people who might be going on vacation and can't get into the flow, so you wanna make sure you have access for multiple people into certain flows that might be shared at the organization. So let's walk through what it looks like to add an owner to an actual flow. I've got a flow already set up here in Power Automate. And when I go and click on it, we're gonna get a dashboard for the flow. It gives you a couple details, some of the connections that are connected in the flow. And over here on the right-hand side, we have the owners. I'm already in there since I created the flow. It already added some of my connections and made me owner of the flow. If we go in and edit that, we actually can add users from the organization, either people or groups. So I'm just gonna chuck one in here now. Now when you pick a user and add them to the flow, this pop-up appears for the connections that are already on your flow. Basically, it's telling you that when you add another owner to a flow, they're gonna have access to your connections that are in the flow. In this case, it's telling me that I'm using Outlook in this flow and I'm using SharePoint. So the other Matt at my company that also shares the same name with me is gonna share a couple other connections on my account to use this flow. We click OK and he's gonna be added to the flow. Now, Matt, the other Matt, is gonna be able to go into Power Automate now and under his flows, there's a tab for cloud flows, which are flows that you've created and not shared to anybody. And then there's the shared with me tab. And those are flows that have more than one owner in Power Automate. So another way to share your flows with others in an organization is to use a service account. A service account is just another Microsoft account that you get, which isn't tied to a specific person at the company. It's really intended for business purposes and it has very specific permissions to the access that you're gonna grant it to. Um, Microsoft doesn't really certify this or recommend it, um, but we like to use a service account and connect it so that when somebody leaves the company or somebody goes on vacation, the flows aren't gonna be totally abandoned or orphaned. So a service account is really, really useful to give access for a certain number of people to whatever it's connected to. So I'm gonna go back into my flow here and add the service account that I have. Instead of just a user at my company, we actually have a service account ready to go. S-A-D-G right here. Same thing, I'm gonna give the service account my connections in the flow. Now another key thing to think about when you're sharing flows with others is the connections that are within the flow. It's not just about granting ownership so they have access to either edit or rename or delete the flow. Um, there are connections that are going on inside of those flows that use your account, your connection, whether it's an Outlook or SharePoint or another area of Office 365. So as an example, now that my service account is added to this flow, I'm actually gonna go in another browser in incognito and get to the flow using my service account. So as the service account, I can go into the flows and find the ones that are shared with me. I can get to the same flow that I built as myself, but now I'm in the flow as the service account. And if I go over to these connections, I can actually change these connections from Matt, myself personally, who wrote the flow to the service account, which is really what I want to connect to. The idea behind here is that the flow does things on behalf of Matt Khan, my account, but I really want it to do things on behalf of the service account. So think about sending an email alert to their company as Matt. Maybe Matt's not always here anymore. Maybe Matt retired or he became the CEO of Twitter. Really, you want a service account that doesn't ever leave the company to send those types of messages. This is also true for updating items in SharePoint, um, sending messages and teams, um, all sorts of different connections. So as the service account, I can now get into this flow under the shared with me tab. I can find that flow that I shared as Matt. And let's just go into this flow directly and see how it's built and set up. I mentioned that there are a couple different connections going on in this flow. Um, the send an email is one of the easiest ones to cover here. So in this flow, each step that's connected to a certain app in Office 365 has connections. Right now, it's connected as Matt Khan, my user account, but I'm not always gonna be here potentially. But the service account is always gonna be here. So as the service account, I wanna use my service account connection rather than Matt Khan's connection. So we can actually just change that right here for the sending of an email, and we can even change it for SharePoint as well. 
so that in the event that this flow updated an item on SharePoint in be on behalf of the flow owner, I could have do that as a service account as well. So if I save this and go back to the flow, I can actually check the flow now. So if I go into the connections here on the flow now, I can see that not only is MattCon connected with a connection to Outlook, but also the service account is also going to be sending emails from this flow. You'll see here in the owner's dropdown of this flow that the service account is in there and myself is in there as the creator. You'll notice that the trash can icon is grayed out here because the creator of a flow can't be removed as an owner of the flow, even when there's additional owners. Um, so as the author of the flow, you can never really remove yourself and uh, I wanna be able to do that. So we're gonna talk about that in the next step as well, which is exporting and importing flows. So importing and exporting flows is a lot like downloading files from your OneDrive or SharePoint and then re-uploading them to a new place. Think of flows as like a compressed zip file. It'll take all of your connections and data, put them into a nice folder and package them and let you upload them to either different environments in Office 365 or just upload them to overwrite power automations that you build. So I'm gonna do that now and export a flow for you guys. You'll see the export button right here at the top. I'm gonna click that and go to package zip file. So right now it's taking all of those connections and all those little configurations on my power automation and it's gonna put them into a nice file for me to download and that's just gonna be on my local machine. It'll take a second because it's getting all of those configurations and things that you built in the flow. Um, you're gonna have to add a couple details. So this is just for this video, a test flow that I've got. It's gonna go in a default environment, which I'm not even gonna put in anything there because we only have one environment here. Um, description is optional, but it's actually gonna show you a couple different actions based off of um, the import setup that you wanna have and the resources or the connections, right, from SharePoint and Outlook that you guys originally had set up on it. So you can actually go in here and decide, hey, when I go and import this into the new environment or to overwrite my flow or whatever, I wanna just select the connections when I'm ready to import it. So we don't change anything on this page, we just click export. And you can see it got downloaded to my local machine right here. I'm gonna leave that there. So again, the only way to remove yourself as an owner from a flow that you originally created is to export the flow, that button at the top of the flow on the dashboard, uh, save it as a package zip file, and then re-import it as a service account or whoever you are. You can share flows this way and send package zip files to anybody basically and have them upload them in their environments. So what we end up with is a service account that's connected to a flow that's sending emails from that service account. In the SharePoint space where these documents live, if they're being updated, it's actually being updated by the service account instead of my name, um, which is really great because the service account is always gonna be at the company, somebody else is gonna manage that service account, and if I ever leave, they're not getting emails from somebody who's no longer at the business. But you can see how all the connections in Power Automate apply to different applications in Office 365, and depending on the coming and going of employees and the dates and things that happen throughout the year, it's really nice to have a dedicated single location to manage all of these flows, to be able to get into each of these flows using the service account if you need to make updates and always make sure that we don't have any orphaned flows or lost flows that we don't know how to get to anymore. So right now you might be wondering, when do I use each of these methods? The first method that we talked about when you're adding just one or two people to your flow are really, really good for those collaborative flows where you might only need another set of eyes on managing the flow or running the flow to update documents. Whatever the use case is for the power automation, if it's for a small group of members or a team, it's probably a good idea just to add one or two of those owners to the flow. When you have a business-wide purpose, something that applies to documents that are shared by everyone or something that goes in, accesses and emails a bunch of different people from a generalized account or location, then you really wanna be looking into using something like a service account that people can have access to and manage and can do the work for them. So hopefully this gives you a better grasp on how to share your flows with other people. You'll be less reluctant to share them out with others and find more powerful ways of collaborating with others using power automation. And hopefully no more flows get lost at your company.